Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sharif and today we are going to create an app. We are going to create an app called the COVID-19 Tracker app. So basically, it's an app that shows the statistics uh, of a country on new cases, um, death, recovered, and whatnot. So this video is not a guide, it's basically just a vlog and it is uh, non-program friendly so if you don't know anything about programming, that's okay. This video is just going to show you how I do, how I create an app, uh, my workflow and yeah, basically how I do it. So without further ado, let's start doing it. So I'm going to show you guys my design first on how the app is going to look like because the main idea of this app, like the main intention of doing this app is to implementing an API to my app because I'm still new in mobile development so I need to understand uh, every concept possible so that I can create more have more functionalities and also more relevant nowadays so I'll show you my design so this will be a so this app will be just one page big so this will be it will be have a card of new cases active recovered death and also it will have a refresh button so it will refresh the statistics every time so it will refresh the statistics every time we click the button so now we have the design and we are going to create an app from scratch to so my computer let's go so I am going to first test this app if it's working or not so I cannot actually uh, run it on my computer because it will because my computer will make noise like it's going it's going to blast off somewhere, I don't know why. So I'm going to display it on my uh, smartphone, which is a Samsung Galaxy S8. Hey. Hear it. You hear it? <laughs> that is the sound of a rocket going to blast off to I don't know space god I really need a better computer to work on my mobile development but it still works so no problem okay so this is the what I call the template that when you initialize a new app so it's a simple app where you press the button and the counter will just go the counter will go it will increase but then again by the minute it is it's working, so now we can change the layout, the ideas, and all the stuff. All right, um, let's go. First, we are going to. So first, we are going to implement the API, meaning that we want to fetch data from the internet. Because to be honest, um, I don't have any idea or any statistics on what's uh, the COVID nineteen cases. So I need the internet to give me the data. So, which means we need to implement an API. So the basic idea of API, for those who don't know what API is, for example, say, I want to know the, the weather for today, right? And I don't have the technology to detect the weather. I don't have any geolocation and whatnot. So I need someone else to do it for me, those who have the information. So API, basically we ask or we make requests to someone that have the data. So anyway, so we are going to implement a COVID-19 API to our app and the COVID-19 API is free for everyone to use so we are going to use that and let's go. Alright, all right. so now we have implemented the request functionalities, HTTPS. Now we need to check if it's connected to the internet or not. So I'm going to create a button to call this thing. So it's called uh, so the action button um, on tap on press. So here on press, it is going to call the get data function. All right, cool. Now if we press the run button, it should be all right, cool. Now this is the button. So if I click this, it should be something appearing on the terminal. Like uh, since I am planning to print. When I click the button, if it receives it, it should print the response status code. And... Alright, cool. 200. 
So if you see a 200 status code means uh, the connection is successful. If we receive like 404, which is an error, which means our connection in, or we have uh, an error in our request form. So 200 means we receive the we receive the information we needed. All we need is to convert information into something that is what we needed basically. All right, so now I have converted my data to the string where what I wanted, which means I first I decode the JSON and then I converted the, well, the data that I received is actually a link hash map. So I go through the data. So I see that I need a response. Um, wait, let me show you something. So if I run it, print, if I print the response, response.body anyway sorry uh, print the data of course right so when I so when I click the button again I should receive an instance of future string but we wait for that uh, I should print the data yep okay cool so now if you see what's here we want to have a the new cases the active ones covered and also won the deaths count which is now it's 117 for Malaysia so now we're going to access to this data in order to return it to our app yeah all right let's go uh, I'll get back to you guys when I'm done with it All right, so now we are going to um, make our data appear on our app. Okay, so now I make a base case where the data is. Now there is no data yet. So when I click this button, okay. So now we have, we changed the counter change to 6694, which is pretty cool, which is what we want. Now we have the data. And we have also transferred it to our phone or our app. Now we're going to get all of the other data and then we're going to beautify it. So now we're done with implementing the API and we successfully received the data. Now we're going to um, make the other number appear. Yeah. All right, I'll get back to you guys again after I did everything. Okay, so I have made some adjustment to the to the design when I press this button to make a hard restart. Uh, so we have something a little bit more beautiful, something more readable. Okay, I see it. All right, so now when I press the button, so you look at that. Now it all appears just like what we wanted. Now we don't want to. Um, press the button every time we open the app so we're going to uh, create a function whenever we open the app we're going to automatically update it update our app and also we're going to implement a refresh button on this button so that it will update it for any new cases that happen All right, so when we, okay, so, so I'm going to press the play, and if you can see, so now it's zero, without clicking anything, any button, it's going to update on itself, any minute now, uh, there you go, you can see the first button, okay, apparently my internet is slow, I don't know why, uh, we're going to wait for the other three, hopefully it will update. There you go. Um, just wait for the death part. Apparently, it's still not there. Anyway, you guys can see that it's basically updated, right? When you're stay, when you're living in somewhere, I don't know, the internet kind of gets slow. But we achieved what we wanted. Uh, it updated every time we open the app, and we also able to update the app every time we click this button. Oh, look! 
we have the, when I click it, we have the 117. Okay, now we have this button. Now we want to make sure we have a spinner, meaning a loading time to show that, so that when user actually open the app, they know that the app is working on the data. Press the play button, run button. Okay, if you see, look, there's a spinner. It's waiting for the data to come. That was pretty cool. Uh, go up, where is it? Okay, now, see, when everything's already updated, it will turn into a circular uh, refresh button. So if the refresh, okay, well, that's pretty quick. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Wait, I forgot to add something. So when we press, we want to make the receive become... Let's try this again. Spin, spin. So when we click it, we're going to spin and we'll be updated. Yeah. So that is pretty much it. That's what we wanted. The functionality is already, everything is there. Now we are going to make it more beautiful to the user. So I'll get back to you when I'm done with it. Alright guys, so now we have finally completed our app. So this is the final product. Okay, not really final because the icon doesn't change much. So this is the app. As you can see, um, I'm using the default Flutter app icon, which is pretty boring. So when I press the button, it's going to there. So now we're going to bring us to our app. Um, it's loading, receiving the data that we're needed ah, as usual I don't know why the internet is so slow but she'll be fetching the data uh, soon we're gonna wait oh, there you go now we have all the data that we needed cool and it also changed to a refresh button so we refresh it's going to refresh all the data that we needed so basically when it's done basically it's receiving the updated ones which is still the same all right so now we are done. That is our app. Pretty simple, not that really hard, to be honest, especially when you know how to do a mobile applications. With that being said, um, our goal is achieved where we know how to implement the API into our app into what's called the COVID-19 tra uh, COVID tracker app. So now I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to implement an API or when receiving a data. So what I did first is I check where is it? So first thing first, after receiving, after I did all the things that I needed, which is the forms, the URL and stuff, I first check that if it's the status code, which is the response.status code, sorry. And we, I print out this, this data. So if I got 200, it means that the 200, if you remember the previous uh, clips, it means that it successfully received the data. If it doesn't re if if it's received other status code, you can just check in the internet status code and you'll basically get what you wanted. Two hundred means successful. And when you receive the status code, you need to get the data, which is we decode the data first. So now we need to know what data are we receiving. Here I say I receive a link hash map, but then again, how do I know? The data that I receive. So first thing first, what I did, I say that I put it as a var, or can just say dynamic. Dynamic means variable, which is it can be any data stored. And then I just say data dot runtime. Data runtime means that we want to know what data it is, and we just print out on our console, and we are going to get what data it is. So when we know what data we got. For in this case, when I run this code, I got a link hash map, okay? All we need to do is search the internet on how to handle the link hash map data, which is pretty easy when you know how to do it. So now we know how to do it. So now we know what link hash map is, and we know what function and method, we, it, it, what method does the link hash map have, which enables us to able to handle this data without any problem and whatnot. So yeah, that's pretty much it. 
um, identify that you receive the data and also identify what type of data you are receiving and you're good to go. So thank you very much for being with me in this tutorial video. I hope you like it. And if it does pique your interest in creating an app or uh, trying to learn about mobile development, there's a lot of resources out there you can search, yeah. <laughs> If you guys want me to teach on how to do this particular app, a more guided through programmer once, uh, comment down below. I'll show you guys how I did it uh, and I'll just walk through to this project. I'll, I'll put it in my GitHub so you can just um, copy it out and fork it or you can just test it out whatever you want. Alright, that's all for me. I hope you guys like this kind of stuff. If you like me to do more um, mobile apps or just some pet pet projects comment down below and you guys have any idea what type of app you do want me to make maybe I'll, I'll consider it I'll consider it to, to make it anyway, so yeah anyway um, thank you very much don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and see you guys on the next video assalamualaikum bye bye